Hey everyone, Josiah here. In my last video, we went through all the aspects you need to plan for your coming stream priority campaign, where you capture email signups first to gauge that initial demand, and then you email the wait list when you're ready to open up pre-orders. This way you can secure cash flow earlier and avoid losing sales to compare this. So before you watch this video and dive into how to set up the campaign without an app, I highly recommend you check out part one first. Now, even though I run a pre-order app called Early Bird, I understand not everyone wants to use an app when they're first starting out, and that's completely fine. You might prefer to just set up yourself, keep it basic until your business is at that stage where it needs the advanced features like deposits, uh, bulk pre-order email updates, campaign analytics, and all the other automation that you can only access for your pre-orders through an app. So the point of this video is to show you how you can do it yourself without an app with minimal coding required. Technically, it's not recoding, it's just adding a few lines of text to your theme code. If I can do it as a non-technical founder, so can you. But if you've already decided you have to use an app, we do have a free tier that you can check it out, you can try it out at your own pace, and then you can upgrade to a pay plan only when your business is ready. Because if you need the app, you see the value, you'll naturally use the app without me prompting you. But if you don't see the value, then no amount of pitching or hard selling in this video will, will convince you to install it anyway. As usual, I respect your time so you don't have to watch this whole video. You can check out the timestamps in the description below to skip anything you already know and jump straight to what you need. Let's get started. All right, product setup. Now, whether you're using an app or not for your pre-orders, you need to set up your new product and this product page, right? I'm sure you already know how to set one up, so I won't talk about that. But when you're creating one for a coming soon product, there are some additional details that might just take you from a 7 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10 pre-order customer experience. For your product name, some merchants would like to add the word pre-order in the title just so it's impossible for customers to miss it. If it's a limited edition or a founder's edition, it will be good to include that as part of the product name as well. Uh, and obviously your marketing assets, uh, just so it promotes that exclusivity. For your product description, uh, you should clearly state it's a coming soon product and then include your expected shipping time frame. For example, you might want to say ships between August 15th to 25th. So mention a date range instead of saying mid-August, late August because that can be a bit vague. And then explain why customers should pre-order, whether it's a limited edition, limited quantity, or if that's a unique story behind the product that makes it special. But of course, try to tie back to how the story and the product relates to your customer's jobs to be done. So for this marketing framework, you can refer to my first video where I briefly talk about this at the 1735 minute mark. And then you let your customers know how you'll keep them updated on the progress. So whether it be through email, social media, etc. And then when you do so, you might net a few new pre-orders from customers who weren't aware of your coming soon product launch. So it's a win-win. Next up, a basic but good pre-order description for you to start with, to base it off might look something like this. So I'll put up a screenshot onto the screen. So you can screenshot this or I'll put it in the video description as in the text for you to copy and paste as well. Now for your product images, since it's a pre-order and you likely won't have the actual stock yet, you can let people know your current photos are just samples. If you do want to set that clear expectations and you're building in public, trying to get the early feedback. Otherwise, you might also want to consider adding an overlay on the first image that says coming soon so people can see it on the collection page too. Uh, otherwise, if you're using the app, you can easily update the badges on your collection and product pages and customize that text as well. And I'm sure you already know the rest, like using high resolution images, taking photos from multiple angles, adding a video if you have one, show the product in use, etc. So I won't dive into these for now. Pricing your pre-orders. If you're offering a pre-order discount and you're not using an app, you can just use Shopify's compare at price function, which puts a strike through of the full price and then it will show the discounted price and you mention to customers when this early bird pricing will end. Otherwise, if you're using an app, some app like ours have a completely separate discount function solely for pre-orders. Now, if you've watched my part one video or you've read my marketing articles before, you know I'm not a huge fan of discounting because it cheapens your brand and your efforts. So if you know you have a strong brand, that's product demand, I recommend you capture a pre-order payment in full upfront, which means you don't need an app to do this, and then you avoid offering discounts so you can shorten your cash conversion cycle and keep good margins for your business. Other product settings. Now that we've set up the product, we need to adjust the inventory as well. So I'll put up some screenshots and we can walk through each of them. So first, let's make sure you've enabled the track quantity option. So for now, set your quantity to zero, but don't enable the continue selling when out of stock option yet, because we don't want customers to be able to purchase anything right now yet, right? We'll take this box later when we've captured waitlist signups and you're ready to run pre-orders. Now, after you've done that, let's make your pre-order products easy to find for yourself or your team as well. So first you assign them to the appropriate product categories. You can add them to a coming soon or new arrivals collection. 
and you can add tags like coming soon, pre-orders, new arrival, whatever suits you best. And so you can easily filter and find them. And don't forget to configure your shipping details and enter the SEO info. And you can then leave the product status to draft for now, since we still have to prepare for the wait list side of things. Okay, and then sales channels. This is to configure where your product appears beyond your Shopify store and website. So a lot of merchants actually are not aware of this. So when you run pre-orders or you open up back orders, both of which means you're selling something that's not in stock yet. Shopify won't display the inventory status beyond your website. Meta, Facebook, Instagram shop, Google shopping, TikTok shop, shop app, point of sale, we call it POS, all these places. So your pre-order products will be displayed as if they're in stock. If you use an app to set up your pre-orders, it might help you automatically untick all these sales channels uh, other than online store and custom storefront because these are the only two places that Shopify will display the pre-order info. Uh, but otherwise, it won't display at all to customers in other places. So my point being is keep this in mind when you're doing this manually yourself. I mean, you can still retick the box and display them on those sales channels. Just keep in mind customers will think they're purchasing something that's currently in stock because the pre-order info isn't shown to them. All right, so before we move on to the next section, let's do a quick recap, four things. Number one, check if all your pre-order product info is accurate. Number two, make sure the coming soon status is clearly communicated to your customers, setting the right expectations. Number three, the expected shipping dates are displayed prominently on your website, especially on your product page as well. And then the last one, the sales channels that you're displaying your pre-order products on. The key here is transparency. You'll read it. You'll read this a lot on Reddit or the Shopify forum when you look up how to run pre-orders. You'll probably find a lot of my responses on there as well. Um, see if you can guess which one's my username. If you have all this clarity, then you'll be providing an excellent, well, at least a good pre-order customer experience. Now that we've set up your product, let's go through a few ways to set up your wait list. These won't require coding or a third-party app, but please keep in mind, I'm not a web designer. I'm just sharing the steps on, of how to capture these email signups. So it's not so much about how to make it pretty. Using Shopify's built-in contact form to create a wait list. This is a Shopify building feature, super simple, doesn't require coding. If you're not fussy about how the page looks and you need to capture emails ASAP, you can literally just go to your theme right now and duplicate your current product page template, add a contact form, apply this template to a product you want to create a waitlist for. But before you go to the theme editor, make sure you've saved a backup of your current theme. And by backup, I mean duplicate or download the theme file because it's a good practice to have a copy of your store design in case anything goes wrong during updates or customizations. Besides using a contact form on the product page, you can also create a dedicated waitlist page. So number one, go to online store, pages, add the page. Number two, title it, join the waitlist or something similar. Again, whatever suits you best. Number three, on the right hand, select contact from the theme template dropdown. Number four, in the page content area, here's where you can write about what products are coming soon, why customers should join the waitlist early, whether it be early access, exclusive early bird discounts, etc., And when do you expect the product to be available? If you want to add more sections or move the layout, you simply create a new template first in the theme editor under pages, create template. And then you edit what you need and you can apply this new template to your page back in the online store pages section. Now you might ask, what about the email signup block? So the contact form will send submissions to your store email while the email signup will add customers to your email marketing list, which is what we want. The contact form gives you more information but requires a bit more manual work. Uh, while the email signup is simpler but only captures email addresses. Now both options work well as a basic waitlist workaround without needing any apps or coding, so it's entirely up to you. Using the Shopify Forms app, so besides using Shopify's built-in contact form or email signup, the Forms app is also a good way to create your waitlist. It's free and even though it might not be as advanced as dedicated third-party apps, which some apps like ours do have free plans anyway, It'll still be better than creating basic contact forms and the forms app is quite easy for you to set up. So you get more advanced features like creating both pop-up and inline forms, collect more types of customer info and data that's relevant to your upcoming launch. And then you can also view analytics on form submissions and then you can go create customer segments based on the data collected. So to set up your waitlist form using the app, first you install the app, obviously. You go create the form and you can choose between pop-up and inline formats. Personally, I think while pop-up has the maximum visibility, customers might mistake that as a newsletter sign-up. So I would prefer to go with inline format. Again, you can name it something like join the waitlist or whatever suits you best. 
and then you can add the fields for name and email. Uh, that one's quite obvious. Specific product interest if you have multiple products coming soon. And then also capture any info, which I call it zero party data to understand your audience. Zero party data is probably worth a video in itself to talk about how it benefits your pre-orders. But anyway, there are some other settings like content disclaimer, customer tags, what happens after the form submission, etc. that you can all set up and customize as well. The most important one would be creating an automatic response to thank people for joining your waitlist as a confirmation and acknowledgement. So this method is super simple, no coding skills required, but still has a good balance between functionality and simplicity. Setting up pre-orders without apps. Now, once you've captured your waitlist signups and you're ready to run pre-orders, let's go through how to do this using just Shopify's built-in features. No apps, no coding required. Changing your add to cart button. So for this section, I'll try and slow down. I know when I get excited, I talk super fast. Now, the simplest way to signal that this is a pre-order is to change your add to cart button, similar to what we've done for the waitlist, where you want to change the add to cart button text to pre-order for specific products only. Depending on your theme, some might have a direct setting to customize the button text. And if they don't, you can try and look for language or theme language settings where you can edit text elements. And if you still can't find a way to edit the add to cart button text, um, like I know the Dawn theme doesn't have this option, you can use product meta fields to indicate the product is a pre-order. It will just require you to copy and paste some liquid code, so a few lines of text. Um, it's still a clean approach. Now, like I mentioned, I'm not a software developer, I'm non-technical, but I also managed to do it for this video, so you definitely can too. Step one, create a pre-order meta field definition. So from your Shopify admin, you go to settings, custom data, and then in the meta field definition section, click products, click add definition, and you can fill in the details. So for the name, uh, you can put in pre-order status, and then for namespace and key, Shopify will generate these automatically for you. And then for a description, you can put something like indicates if this product is available for pre-order. So it is text to remind yourself. And then uh, I chose single line text um, for the type and then I click save. Step two, add pre-order info to specific products. From your Shopify admin, you go to products, you select the product you want to set up as a pre-order, and then you can scroll down to the meta fill section and click on your pre-order status meta fill, which you have just created. And then if you chose single line text type like I did just then, then here's where you can enter text like, this is a pre-order item expected to ship in two to three weeks, or you can mention the date range like I suggested at the start. Um, so, and then that's the info that you'll be displaying to the customers. And then you click save. Step three, display the pre-order info on your product page. So for the Dawn theme, you'll need to add a section to display this meta field. And then from your Shopify admin, you go to online store themes, you click customize, on your Dawn theme. Again, make sure you have a, uh, you save a backup first or you duplicate the file first. And then from the drop down at the top, you select products, then create template, and you can name it pre-order product page or uh, whatever suits you to remind yourself that this is the template, and then you click add section. And after you've clicked add section, you search for custom liquid or text. You add the block to where you want the pre-order info to appear. I think anywhere above the add to cart button is fine. And if you're using custom liquid, you can add this code. So I'll put it on the screen now. I'll put that into the video description as text as well. And if you're using text type, uh, single line text, uh, just type the pre-order info in. And then, then you can save your changes and apply this template to your pre-order products by going to each product settings and select it under the theme template. Uh, you will need to paste the pre-order info in the meta field for each product as well. But after all this, even though it sounds a bit tedious, now you can indicate to customers it's a pre-order and you can keep your regular add to cart button functionality, but also easily update the pre-order info for different products. Managing inventory for pre-orders. Okay, so remember during your waitlist phase, I mentioned don't enable the continue selling when out of stock option yet, right? Now is the time to enable it so you can start capturing pre-sales. There are two ways to do this. Number one, if you want to sell as many pre-orders as possible, you probably want to keep your quantity at zero and take the continue selling when out of stock option because you don't have physical stock yet, right? This lets your customers purchase even though your quantity is showing zero. Number two, if you want to limit how many pre-orders you accept, maybe you only want to sell uh, 100 pre-orders and then so you set your quantity to 100 instead of zero. 100 being the max limit you want to pre-sell. And once you hit that limit, the product automatically becomes unavailable. Moving on, let's talk about creating collections and store-wide messaging. So to create a dedicated pre-order or coming soon collection, 
Number one, you go to products, collections, and create the collection. And then you can either manually add the pre-order products, or if you've tagged your pre-order products already, you can create conditions like add products where product tag equals pre-order to the collection. And then so by creating these collections, it makes it easy for customers to find all your products that are for pre-orders only. You might also want to add the store-wide announcement banner. I'm sure many of you already do this when you run promos. Actually, you probably have it 24 seven on your store already. Most themes have an announcement bar in the theme customizer. So you can just add something like pre-orders available, ships August 2025, that links to your pre-order collection. All right, we're finally wrapping this up. So pages to support your pre-orders. This is the last bit we need to do, um, creating a few new pages to document your pre-order info in case your customers have questions and want to find answers before reaching out to you. Speaking for myself, I'm one of those type of people where I'll always try to figure things out myself before I reach out to customer support because I'm actually a massive introvert. Number one, pre-order FAQ page. So you answer when items ship, cancellation policy, what happens if there are delays, this sort of info. Now I haven't written the template for this yet, but when I've done so, eventually I will do so. I'll add it to our shop site blog and I'll update in the view description below as well. Number two, pre-order policy page. You write it with clear terms and conditions. So I do have a free base template for this. You can use it to tailor and customize for your own business. Uh, so again, link in the description below. Step three, updating your email templates. So usually we recommend our merchants at the very minimum to edit the order confirmation emails to remind customers if they've purchased a pre-order item, when they'll receive the shipping updates, how they'll receive those updates, etc. So just to set expect clear expectations for your customers about the pre-orders. From the Shopify admin, you go to settings, notifications, and customer notifications. And here you'll be able to find the order confirmation email and you can click on edit code, open up the HTML template and put the lines of text in. So I have a step-by-step -step guide help article um, that I'll share in the video description as well. Now I'm just gonna quickly mention that by default Shopify doesn't have any pre-order email templates. So this is one of the benefits of using a pre-order app like ours. You can bulk send unlimited pre-order emails to customers, whether if the stock has arrived early or if the shipping is delayed. So yeah, we've just gone through the process of how to set up a waitlist and coming soon pre-order campaign with that in app. I hope it was helpful and informative. If you're just starting out, you only have one to two pre-order products and you plan to ship within 30 days, this manual approach is totally fine. Have a read of my blog article about how to avoid Shopify putting your account on hold when you run pre-orders without an app and you'll be fine. But if you are expecting to ship the pre-orders after 30 days, which could lead to Shopify and the banking partners asking questions, or if you know you need to handle a lot of pre-orders for your product launch, or maybe you want advanced features like the one I mentioned at the start, then you probably want to look into the pre-order app with the built for Shopify status. Anyhow, the most, most important thing is transparency. It's everything, the key to pre-orders. If you're clear about timelines and you keep your customers up to date throughout the whole process, you'll create a great customer pre-order experience just with this simple approach. And that's it for part two. Let me know if you have any comments, uh, any questions about this methodology or framework, connect with me on LinkedIn as well, or send us an email and say hi. I'll see you in the next video, part three, where I'll do a demo of how to set up a waitlist and coming soon pre-order campaign through our early bird app on the free plan.